minutes. Welcome back, Terry Hall. Hello. Hi. Good to have you back on the program. Last time you came, you brought in the Sex Pistols, Anarchy in the UK is your choice, mm -hmm. in our collector's choice. And before we announce what uh, this afternoon's choice is, let's go back again and, and talk about your, your youth and the, and the records you bought. Can you remember the first record you ever bought? The first single? It wasn't for myself, but I bought Hi-Ho Silver Lining for my sister. <laughs> they all say that. <laughs> it's true, honest. No, I used to punch my hand in the air to it. I was only ten or something, but that's a classic. <laughs> I remember when you brought in the, the Sex Pistols record, you said at the time, when you heard that music, you decided you wanted to, to make music then, and you got your friends around. Do you mean before 1976, you didn't really have any inclinations towards music or any thoughts towards being uh, in a band? Yeah, I had a lot of heroes, like... Um, David Bowie and but I didn't understand how he did it even if you went to a David Bowie concert you, you would be so far away from him it, it wouldn't seem real yeah up until the punk movement started but all of a sudden you could stand next to them and they would sort of communicate with you on your level instead of another level what about the Coventry movement, of which you are most associated, of course, with Two-Tone and your time and success with the specials? Suddenly, Coventry, not an area known as a rock and roll breeding ground at all, not an area really with any strong identity apart from Lady Godiva and the football team, suddenly it arrived as a place where there was this very definite kind of music. How did that all happen? Why did it suddenly explode? Had it been going for a while and nobody noticed? Or did you all, just, by coincidence, start making the same music and arrive on the same level? The specials would have happened if we lived in Worcester or anywhere. But it was just the specials were put together in a way that made it exciting because there were seven totally different people with totally different backgrounds. And all of a sudden we were in the same group and it looked like it had been a development over like 20 years or something, but it was a matter of three months. But we just presented ourselves in a way that it looked, I don't know, original. Well, it certainly did. What about your own record collection? Do you have a big record collection at home? A lot of my records I take from Chrysalis. I've got like <laughs> 800 Jethro Tull LPs <laughs> that I can't swap, which is a bit sad. But, so I'm stuck with a lot of Chrysalis records, and I, I just buy records when I like them, but it's not too often. Yeah, so you're very particular then? Yeah. yeah. All right, you brought in Echo and the Bunnymen. Now, what is it about Echo and the Bunnymen that you like, or is it just this, this record that uh, you like? No, they're the only British group that I've got full respect for. They just seem to know what they want and they just go and do it. And I think they produce really good records. Now, this record is called A Promise. Mm -hmm. When did you come across that? When it first came out? Or were you friendly with the band and you heard it in concert first? Or, or no, I heard it on the radio and I, I really liked the record, so I bought it. And I you just think it's a very classy record. And you still got it in your collection then? Yeah, I still play it a lot. Okay. Uh, anybody that you'd like to dedicate it to? Um, Jeanette and Biffo. Biffo's my cat. I don't, he can't understand English, but he certainly rocks to this one. <laughs> <laughs> right, Terry Hall's choice on Collector's Choice. Thanks for coming in again. Thank you. Echo and the Bunnymen, and this is A Promise. Mm -hmm. 